with Lone Star Metal Magazine. We're sitting here with Dixie Wish. We got Trinidad, CC, JT's off, probably drinking a beer somewhere. Yeah, so, something like that. Dad, <laughs> say hello to the camera. Hello How there. Going? How are you doing? <laughs> I think they're doing good. Right on. All right. Well, uh, first things first, man. Why did it take so long for Let It Roll to come out? Well, basically, lots of changes within the last six years or so. Uh, Clayton, our original guitarist, kind of life changed and moved on about that was like four years ago right something like that yeah it was 2008 and uh basically jt came into the fold and uh jt smith killer guitars from the houston area right and uh took some time writing you know kind of getting acclimated learning how to write together so it took a little bit of time to do right. but we're real happy with the result let it roll came out and it's been doing well you know and and we're already working got plans for the next record so cool. those hiatuses are over as right. far as, as records in between I cool. think. so you're still staying with small stone yeah right now we're still with small stone yeah they've, they've done a, a good job of you know basically supporting the band as far as doing what they said they were going to do you know right yeah and uh yeah you know it's it's album by album so just cool. kind of roll with it like that cool yeah well, uh, you talked a little bit about lineup changes and stuff since the last Smoke and Mirrors album. Talk a little bit about musically, how have you guys changed and what's going, what, what's changed since the uh, last one? What do you think, Kurt? I don't know, it might be a little dirtier, a little bluesier maybe. Um, it's kind of a little tighter since we've uh, actually all in the same town get to practice and ride together now because that was kind of the problem before is we we're all spread out like during smoke and mirrors i lived in austin he lived in houston clayton lived in dallas it was almost impossible getting together and writing anything so now we're kind of we actually rehearse nowadays yeah <laughs> right wow yeah. that's cool what's that like yeah. crazy <laughs> i can imagine yeah I it's definitely imagine. tighter though yeah, yeah it's got a lot about tighter it, we kind of hone in together a little bit not not in a better way i guess i would want to say but in just a little bit more as far as a sonic way kind right, of heavy yeah. heavy together you know there's a little bit more of a bang going on on the stage cool. now I think would you say that, uh, would you say I know JT is a completely different guitar yeah. player than Clayton was right would you say his addition kind of molded maybe a little bit different of course yeah it's a different feel yeah, yeah it's totally totally different feel I think like you said with the bluesy a little bit more bluesy a little dirtier bluesy and kind of taps into a different thing you know with us sonically as that goes right. you know that the, you know as far as songwriting too i think it this record is definitive of that more stripped down pop it songs you right. know and 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 uh i think that the next record's going to show a little bit different kind of versatility going on so cool. i'm excited about it cool yeah. cool what do you think defines dixie witch today in 2012 wow. you got anything I don't know how to answer that. <laughs> right? I don't know. Let it, uh... I really, man, all the songs are really cool because they're just, you know, it's, I think a lot of people didn't know what was going to happen with us. So the record being released in, you know, every song to me is, is great because for us, because it's us coming back right. when a lot of people didn't know if we would or what we would didn't happen even know us. if we would either yeah, we didn't know. know what was going on or if it was going to keep going or how I, it was going to sound or how it would change or we you know how much it would still stay the same or and that right. that kind of the high deal that song yeah. I, that's a real definitive song because you know it all started kind of a joke we were talking about the high deal you know it's all about the high deal man you know you know and it turned into something that's really cool and i think that kind of displays a little bit of songwriting that's going on with us that is going to develop right. you know i think that that's that that one i'm real proud of i like a lot because it goes into a little bit with me vocal wise some different melodies learning how to sing some different kinds of ways you right. know yeah that's one of my favorites definitely i love the let it roll song yeah and that's the boogie good, song right? boogie yeah. man and automatic ladies <laughs> kick ass <laughs> all right, all right. just say the whole album just say the whole album <laughs> dig it though man dig it yeah. cool cool well uh you guys have been around 13 years. Uh, yeah, I was mm -hmm. going to say 10 plus a decade, you know, yeah. and, and then some. What are some of the things that you guys have learned from all your experience, you know, from, from 99 day one all the way up to now? Uh -huh. what, are, what are, you know, some some of the lessons? Maybe it could be a hard lesson or it could be an easy lesson. Right. You know what? Um, I think it's, for me, it's just more about, you know, being thankful for what we have, learning how to handle it a little bit better than... In the beginning, it was kind of like real fast-paced. Right. We were a lot crazier lifestyle-wise. 
went through a lot of hard times, yeah. you know, the whole gamut, lifestyle and stuff. So I think to come out of that, there's a little bit more of a reflection of, of that, you know, so I think that able to handle things a little bit better in that sense. Doesn't mean we won't throw down and get crazy here and now, <laughs> you know, but it was, it's not an it's everyday thing. a little more thing. stability kind of. Yeah, thing. yeah, it's a little bit more stable and it helps, that's what I think makes me feel proud is that I know that we have something and it's still growing. On that yeah. note, bring out the tequila. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Just not too early. You're right. Not too not early. After you play, right? After you play, not before. Try to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Right on. Well, uh, you guys from day one have been a three-piece. Have there been any challenges you guys have met as a three-piece? Because, I mean, you got yeah. ZZ Top obviously made it look successful and stuff. Right. But I know a lot of bands and a lot of... A lot of uh, situations come up where maybe being a three-piece might be a little difficult so what are some of the challenges you guys may have tried to I don't overcome know, man it's actually kind of made it easier because we kind of, we originally started looking for a lead singer and it was just man, we got on my wish you could have filmed some of that or just talk uh, the, talk, the conversations some, yeah was, we tried to find a lead vocalist for dixie which and we right, never yeah. could find he was he was what was it, it was like part dio part you know we're trying to find that that person in right, front of you know and never could find it and so that's when kurt and i decided to we even talked about like putting a, some guy to like do not keyboards but like a b3 player or something somebody to do like hammond yeah, deep right, purple yeah. style stuff and yeah that never worked and we could never hook that up and also it's just uh it's hard enough getting three people in the room much less more people and trying <laughs> right. to keep it all together well kurt and i we played together for shit 16 years on top of it and i think kurt and i we have we have a pretty heavy duty rhythm sound yeah. going and I think that the guitarist like with JT, you know, with what Clayton did but with what J T can do, I think that it's really there's no uneasiness about it. Right. We're all about the power trio. I think we're we're an essential power trio. That's what we are. Cool. And I think that that's kinda of what I've kinda of like playing in my life as playing with bands and stuff this is what it's all led we to even originally me. talked about that or no clayton originally tried to add a second guitarist early yeah. on and she didn't, I, wouldn't, out. I didn't want to do that yeah. and uh then even even after jt's been in the band we jammed a couple times with a friend of ours doing an mc5 song and stuff and it's cool but oh that's it's just, fun it's yeah it's just kind of it kind of changes everything to where we don't really want to change it it's with the trio the communication is real pure man it's yeah. one two three it's all there in the room and it's easier to communicate for us you right. know yeah. so i think i think the power trade the trio that's just kind of what we're about that's what dixie cool. witch is about cool. well speaking watch of we'll get a new member here we're having rusty's joining the band <laughs> right yeah i'll just stand there why not <laughs> i'm good at that well, right speaking on. of trios and stuff, this is one of my favorite questions to ask bands. Right. Like, I, you guys have been around, like you said, 13 years. Yeah. Summarize Dixie Witch in three words. Three words? Three words. Wow, man. Wow. <laughs> um, you gotta push, nail it down, man. <laughs> nail it down, man. I would, I would say, mm, there's power. I feel power. Powerful. Okay. It's powerful. Say power three times. <laughs> power, 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 power. Rock and roll. That's what it is. <laughs> Here, here's my rock and roll. <laughs> rock and roll. Rock and roll. Powerful rock, rock and, and roll. roll. Uh, there you go. Right right on. On. He can keep his power. I'm just adding rock and roll. <laughs> right on. Right on. What guess, do you got? I, don't I, don't know. Know. I guess that'll work. Yeah, that'll work. Power it's, rock to say. it is, man. It's 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 love. It's yeah. power. It's what it's you know. It's got a lot of soul to it. I think. I think yeah. that we. We put our our hearts into it a little bit, a lot of it. So, yeah, yeah. Nice. A lot of the songs about stuff that means something to us. And when we play, we play with that, cool. and that's we stand by it. Yeah, we'll stand right by it every day of the week. Well, having seen you guys numerous times, yeah. I, I think it just comes out on your stage show too. Right so on, man. Yeah. Talking about that, kind of. Do you guys think about your stage show, or is it just? What, what what thought process goes into when you guys plug in and, and hit the stage? I'm just going out there and kicking ass. Yeah. You know, I mean, as far as plotting stuff, not really. I mean, just now we just get up, up there and turn it up and yeah. go, man. Yeah. Just got a whole lot up. of thought behind it. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. Just feel it and get it on. Let's get it on. That's kind of <laughs> one of the whole... Yeah, that's the go. mode, man. Cool. Totally. Cool. Yeah. All right, I'm going to throw an off-the-wall question. Oh, shit. Because... <laughs> I've seen a resurgence here lately, and, and you guys have kind of followed that trend for a while now. I think even before it was a trend, but 
Why is vinyl popular again? Because it sounds good. Yeah. yeah. Plus the artwork, the packaging, holding your hands, looking at it. It's not some not some little thing that you go and you throw in your car and lose in the back seat. And right. It's not some you go download on the computer and you don't care about it. It's the whole artwork, the layout, the holding your hand, the unwrapping it, the putting it on the turntable, sitting back listening to it. You get all the little crackles and pops. It just sounds better, everything. So. Yeah, and it's the, the best CDs, format available. Yeah, with all the CDs, the day are dying. Yeah. You know, everything, you know, and, and that. It's all come back yeah, around. There's it's been come vinyl. Back to there's the vinyl, man. Vinyl, there's 8 tracks, there's cassettes, there's DVDs, right. there's MP3s. Vinyl's always been the mainstay. Yeah. So. Yeah. Cool. And it's awesome to have the vinyl to hold it. Oh, yeah. And, you know, man. Like, I yeah. when I first got into metal, you know, it was like, yeah, oh, it's just dude. that they're flipping through and getting that musty yeah. smell. You know, and and so, the gatefolds you know. and the. Exactly. Yeah, and the art, man. You go back and look at your Iron Maiden records and all that stuff and all the artwork and Judas Priest records, man. It was a killer yeah. piece yeah. of artwork, yeah. too. Yeah. And that, so. that's how you used to pick up a record back yeah, in the day. Yeah, you used to go to the right? store. Like, there, wasn't oh, all yeah, the, cool. there wasn't all the media and stuff so much when you were a kid. You just right, kind of went yeah. to the store and dug through, especially like used record stores grow up. You just go through and dig through and find something that looks cool. And, Cool. You know, it's good to see it. Hopefully, it's cool. Coming back, yeah. <laughs> so, do you think that that vinyl is for a certain generation, or do you think some of the newer? Do you see? Because I know you guys sell it. So, do you yeah. see kind of the, some of the yeah, new generation the, getting into the it? Younger generations getting into it. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely all the bands touring and stuff. You know, yeah. vinyl's what sells, man. You're yeah, selling definitely. It, selling it at on at the concerts, at the shows. You know, definitely. Yeah. Cool. But I definitely think there's a resurgence in it happening. Awesome. Yeah. And thank you for what you do. Uh, you know, a, a good friend Jason McMaster, yeah, he swears yeah. by you. Great guy. So we saw Broken Teeth stickers up and stuff like yeah, that. But just definitely. we appreciate you supporting the heavy music. Definitely. And and us, especially bringing us here and trying to help us grow out here in the north, north area of Houston yeah. and stuff. Really appreciate it. Because I think we're a little bit different bite than a lot of the different metal that happens but right. we have this we still convey the same message you're kind of, you're kind of on that the cusp yeah. of metal and, and, and kind of a rock, rock kind of thing yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. but uh i just appreciate your support man and lone star yeah. metal and fucking a <laughs> cool yeah. uh, got any comment no nah, man just thanks to everybody that comes out supports it yeah you know buy something comes out again cool. totally. that's what you want <laughs> awesome. All right. Well, we've had a Dixie Witch here, Lone Star Metal Magazine. I know. Keep the metal alive. And yes, sir. I appreciate it, Trinidad. Oh, yeah, man. Looking totally. forward to a kick-ass show tonight. Right on. Let's do it. Thank you.